So on this episode of What I Tell Investors, let's talk about the RMM. That's the remote monitoring and management software used by small to mid-sized companies delivering IT services. Today in this video, we're gonna talk about what it is, why it's needed, what are the growth points, what types of devices can be managed, who are the major players, what is it expanded to include, what about Max? What about the network? And a link into another piece, the PSA, or Professional Services Automation Tool. That's today on this episode of What I Tell Investors. I'm gonna start off with a definition. Let's define what this product is in order to understand the problem it's solved. It's the remote monitoring and management technology. The problem we're trying to solve here is pre-broadband being available. In order to service computers, you had to run around. You had to go out there and you had to service each machine by putting your physical hands on it and servicing it that way. As broadband became ubiquitous, the idea of remoting in and being able to fix something emerged. That's the idea you often see in screen shares and the ability to work with a remote technician. As that became more of the standard, providers realized they didn't have to roll a truck every single time they needed to work with someone, and it became more efficient to not do so. So the idea of being able to service that with technology emerged. This started right around that sort of 2003, 4, 5 time frame is when the idea really took hold and products moved into this space. But it's more than the idea of just servicing somebody remotely. The idea was not only could we screen share with that individual person, but we could also start taking advantage of automation and the technologies built in to do things remotely. So it was the idea of full managing and moving into monitoring. Because not only could we do things to these machines remotely, but we could also monitor to make sure they were working the way they needed to. So ideas like we'd watch logs, we'd make sure disk space didn't fill up, we'd keep patches running, those all started emerging. So why is it needed? Well, the idea is, is we're trying to convert the idea of being reactive, waiting for the user to call and say something is broken, into the idea of being proactive. With a tool like a remote monitoring and management tool, or RMM, we can actually be much more proactive. We can make sure patches are deployed, which we know from a security perspective is really vitally important. We can check to make sure things have happened, like backups, like software being deployed, and we can do those tasks remotely as well. And as we standardize our environment as the IT provider, we can deliver a cons consistent service over time. That's actually the core pro solution that we're trying to solve here is the ability to do that consistently over time. By doing that, we're able to then establish a core baseline for an end customer's computer environment and work from there. That's why it's become such a core piece of what a managed services provider does. I talked about managed services providers on my video, what I tell investors, the managed services market and what we're serving there. This is the first of the tools that we often think about that's used in this space. So the growth points. The reason this is such a core interesting technology is the fact that it grows with its usage. If you're a managed services provider and you're delivering service, you grow every single time you bring on a new customer and you bring on a new user within a customer. So you've got those two growth points as the managed services provider themselves. The software vendor providing the RMM also gets the growth point of every single time they add a managed services provider themselves. So that's very interesting to think about because that way you're getting multiple levels of growth. As that tool has expanded, it's also started adding new functionality. So every single time we add a new function, so for example, integrated antivirus or endpoint detection or the ability to you know web shield and protect users from scanning you know going to places they're not supposed to go each of those additional features are also a growth point 
both for the managed services provider to sell new services, as well as the software vendor to deliver more. And the more of these you can add, the more you get these growth points and start adding new customers, new users, new services, and you can see how quickly this core expands. Now, let's talk about devices for a second. The RMMs have very traditionally been focused on Windows-based devices. In fact, the legacy of this technology, if you think back to that time frame that it came from of 2003, 4, 5, that was a very Windows-centric world client server with Windows desktops and Windows servers. Oftentimes, these RMM technologies were installed on premises. In fact, many of the legacy technologies still have that significant on-prem installation component. So they're very heavily Windows focused. As a general rule, the primary devices that they're handling are all of the varieties of Windows. We've moved into other areas at some limited capacity, the ability to do some basic mobile device management, as well as Macs are often considered, but often not fully fledged citizens within this. The primary devices are those user endpoints. That's important for you to know, as you know about the space, is if you're looking at a particular provider to dig into those other areas of devices that they might be doing. Maybe they're not doing them quite so well. Let's talk about the players in the space. In my mind, there's actually three categories of players. There's the big four who've come to dominate the space. We have the second tier providers that are offering upstart style approaches to it. And then we have the wider community approach to that. Let me break it down. In the big four, these are the ones that have consolidated down through acquisitions and by pulling together from a private equity perspective because they are all private equity backed at this point. Who are the big four? ConnectWise, Kaseya, SolarWinds, and Datto. They've rolled up their technologies and each of them have a remote monitoring and management offering that generally are considered the big four in this space. At your second tier, you have companies like Atera, Synchro, Ninja. These companies that are upstart at some level, they have a smaller user base and they're positioning themselves either with a different approach to pricing or more agile software development plan or just a different uh, engagement to the community. Finally, you have a large swath of people that are trying other things from open source solutions to using enterprise technologies to cobbling things together on their own with lesser known products. You have this swath of opportunity out there of people that are trying different things. In fact, I'm tracking not one, but at least two open source projects of trying to create a fully open source version of the RMM technology. From my perspective, that is both a threat to the space because it could, of course, go away, but also showing the opportunity and how vital these technologies are. I'm going to make some broad statements about the requirements in this space for the technology. They're all kind of the same. The MSP community goes to a lot of effort to try and compare and contrast between them. And in fact, there's an open source effort community driven to create a spreadsheet of all the features and list all of what's going on. And this has sprung up multiple different times with comparisons. But ultimately, they're actually all kind of the same. They deliver about the same solution at roughly the same price point, particularly because you can negotiate the pricing, and they all do about the same thing. If I was advising any MSP, I'd say buying any of them is fine. You're buying essentially the same thing. There are certain drawbacks, there are certain upsides to different ones, but ultimately for 80, 90% of the functionality, you're getting about the same thing. So it's important to know that when you look at this space, knowing it has become mature, particularly based on its legacy. We've been at this for about 15 years or more.
What's it expanded into? Now, one of the things about the RMM is that it is such a core foundational technology that we've added pieces around it. Systems like documentation management, email security, all of the various add-ons that have happened here, they've all expanded the use. Each of these companies is trying to push outward, particularly because you can think about the way they bill. Based on my earlier statements about billing, the more that they can charge and take out to the market, the better they can do. So that's actually a real benefit. Each of them is looking to bring something to market. Their strategy, particularly for the big four, is to acquire that. I've made some comments on why I think this is bad from an investor's perspective, because it's not necessarily growing the market, but that is the way they're doing it from a revenue roll-up perspective. So each one of them is looking to buy something new and add it to their portfolio to cross-sell it to their existing customers. Additionally, there is the opportunity for them to sell themselves as an integration point, meaning because it is such a fundamental piece in the way that a managed services provider goes about running their business from an operational perspective and dealing with their end customers, if you plug into the RMM with your own technology, you become more easily consumed by those managed services providers. So they've become a platform to go into other services for the ancillary vendors surrounding them. Now, I wanna take on the Mac question directly. All of these providers have a Mac offering, and I can broadly say it's not great. They've not truly embraced the time and energy to build out truly great Mac solutions. In fact, there's another space with companies like Jamf and Adigy that are specifically focused on this solution for the Mac space. Whereas those solutions completely ignore Windows, I can safely sort of say they don't ignore the Mac from this perspective, but they're not great at it. You can argue whether or not that's a really good thing or a bad thing from a market share perspective, but there is no one single solution that is best in class in both categories, and it's worth calling out specifically as you consider this market. Now let's address the network too. All of these products have functionality for looking at network devices like SNMP monitoring, ping scanning, that kind of stuff. But there's a subcategory of vendors that have spent their time focusing specifically on network management technologies. Areas like being able to look at those printers, look at those network switches, be able to find Internet of Things devices, that's kind of a subcategory. Each of these products do try and have their own offerings. They're often augmented by companies like Ovic and Domotes who are also looking at this, at delivering services in their space. They work together to do some integrations, but they have not truly embraced the larger network to manage every single device. This is also true as the gaping hole of cloud management. These, these technologies have not looked at engaging with those cloud services. From my perspective, that's the big next opportunity that I think they're gonna miss out on. I've got lots of other material that digs into this, but from a cloud perspective, they're not doing much more than what could traditionally be done with their agents. So for example, if I have a Windows virtual machine living up in the, desk, in the, in the cloud, or I have a virtual desktop, I can install their agents and still manage them like endpoints, but I can't necessarily get full visibility into the Azure stack, the GCP stack, into AWS. That's not the solutions that these technologies are focused on. Now let's address the Professional Services Automation, or PSA. If you're looking at this from an investment perspective, you've probably heard a lot of talk. I'm doing a separate video on PSA, so if you'd like to understand that. But the two have come together to be very closely aligned, although they solve different problems. The RMM, as we've talked about, solves those endpoint management problems for your end customers. The PSA is what you run your business on ticket management, invoice management, relationship management, all of the bits that a managed services provider will run their own business on, that's done in the professional services automation. Now you can see this, the two fit together very closely. If you're tracking tickets, you want to link that to the work that you're doing with those endpoint management. That's where the two have come together. 
all four of the big four have got an offering in PSA and have tried to bring those technologies together. In fact, in some cases, particularly like a ConnectWise, started with the PSA and acquired an RMM technology. Whereas a company like Datto started as a backup company and then acquired Autotask and brought those technologies in. Or a SolarWinds that started as an RMM technology companies rolled those two together and part of their acquisition strategy was to buy a PSA. But at this point, they all have one. I'll dive into PSA more specifically in a separate video, but I wanted you to understand that the two have come together to be part of that. In fact, a company like Asyncro is approaching this as one single integrated product and trying to keep that binding from day one. The two are closely aligned, although with many of these legacy technologies, they are not necessarily the same product. And most importantly, from an investment perspective, they have different growth trajectories. A PSA, as you may have learned in my managed services market video, the difference between a sell to and a sell through, a PSA is a sell to product where a RMM is a sell through product and has that larger expansive growth piece. There's an argument to be made about stickiness on the PSA. We'll cover that in the PSA video. So that covers a lot of the things you need to know about a remote monitoring and management technology. You'll note I did not try and keep up to date with every particular detail of which product does what because this is more from a market overview perspective to give you a sense of what that space looks like, what the technology is, and why it matters. Thanks for listening. If you like it, go ahead and hit like. Hit that subscribe button. I do a ton of material covering the IT services market, and I deliver a daily podcast called The Business of Tech, which is all the news about technology through the lens of those IT service providers. So if you're interested in learning more, you can listen to the issues that matter to them and go from there. There's videos here on the YouTube channel giving you insights into the kind of issues that they are providing and what they're thinking about is in terms of the way they deliver their services. If you need more information, go ahead and visit mspradio.com. You can reach out and get in touch with me and I'm always happy to answer more questions. Thanks for listening.